Army stronghold. Until this war, it has been identified chiefly with the Army and the Royal Navy, guarding its straits. Today, it belongs to the Royal Air Force as well. From the Europa Point on the south to the Spanish mainland on the north, the promontory is only three miles long and from 600 yards to one and a half miles wide. But out of this has been created one of the world's great airdromes. The very name Gibraltar has come to be a synonym for fortification. But today the guns that bristle from its crest are supported by a new weapon of defense, giant radar beacon, day and night sweeping the sky for any sign of approach by the enemy. Bisecting the airfield's runway is a road which carries all traffic to and from Spanish territory only a few hundred yards away. The problem of physical security is dealt with by traffic policemen acting in coordination with the field's flying control. But the problem of military security, even with the aid of a nightly curfew, is another and more complicated matter. The field north front was once a sandy plain used as a race course. The runway is 2,000 yards long and 150 yards wide. They cut straight across from east to west, with one end meeting the Mediterranean and with the other extending out into Algeciras Bay. Lined up at North Front is Gibraltar's defense flight of Spitfires and Hurricanes, used for short range reconnaissance, and which stand by ready for fighter action against attack from the air. The harbor of Gibraltar is formed by the horseshoe curve of Algeciras Bay, and a section of it, called New Camp, is used as a flying boat base. British based flying boats are often diverted here following their Bay of Biscay patrol. Sometimes because it is nearer, sometimes because of weather, sometimes for resurfacing, and sometimes for battle damage repairs. 37 millimeter shells from a U boat splinter this Catalina pedestal and wing. The hangars at U Camp are equipped for the complete overhaul both of Catalinas and Santos. Once the boats are resurfaced, they are ready to undertake another patrol while en route back to their home bases in Britain. Tunneled 500 yards into the rock is the war room, center of the area combined headquarters for Army, Navy, and Air Force. The present air officer commanding at Gibraltar is Air Vice Marshal William Elliott. He was preceded by Air Vice Marshal Sturdy Simpson, here shown in conference with the Commander-in-Chief, Vice Admiral Sir Harold Buller, and his staff. From Gibraltar, the Coast Corps carries out anti-U-boat patrols and escorts convoys approaching and leaving the Mediterranean. Operations within the Mediterranean itself are under the control of the Mediterranean Allied Air Forces Command. Iceland, United Kingdom, Gibraltar. Linking with these coastal command bases in anti-U-boat coverage are the bases of the Eastern Air Command of the Royal Canadian Air Force and the United States Navy's Eastern Sea Frontier. But until 1943, there was a critical gap. Then that gap was filled from the Azores. Great Britain obtained use of the Azores through an almost 600-year-old treaty with Portugal. The island of Terceira is the base of the Coastal Command's operation. It was here at the port of Angra that a British landing party arrived on October the 8th, 1943 begin the task of establishing a fully operational air base in just a little over six weeks. 